Hello and welcome back to the show. So, seems the teams are ready to start on Cobblers. Again, we had a dominating performance from Splice on uh, the previous map, which was Mirage. So, looking at the odds on uh, the websites out there, they're about 50-50, but Yango thinks it's about 70% in favour of Splice. And I think it's hard to disagree based on what we've seen today. So, going into Cobble, Yanko, what are your thoughts? Well, I think this is a better map for CLG. Well, maybe not as much a better map for C CLG. It's not a good map for Splice. They, they didn't play it that much. They usually veto it along with Cash or, or Overpass. They don't play the, the custom maps as much. So if CLG are you know, to have a, a chance on the third map, obviously they have to win this one. And I would maybe favor them if they were as a, as a whole team. But with Pita, you can't be really sure. I, this could go to zero for Splice. Alvor, what um, are your thoughts? I'm actually thinking I'm leaning towards the 2-0, mainly because uh, what Yanko mentioned, the fact that they're playing with Pita. I know nothing against him, but he hasn't played in a long time. And uh, I'm assuming last time we saw them play, that was actually the last time I saw them play while casting them was actually during the face hit stage three. So uh, they I think the game on Cobblestone ended 16 to 13, which is uh, not a not a bad result from Splice at all. You know, getting that close, and that was with CLG having a full lineup. And I would assume this place have, have made some improvements because they look really solid on Mirage. Yeah, you're, you're right with that result. Actually, that shocked me massively. I think we casted that one together. Yeah. And going into this, we already <laughs> had the pistol round. It started. And let's see how things go. We've got JD and the classic duelies there in the position of drop zone. I think uh, Get Right and MPK made that very famous. But here it is. The push comes in. <laughs> Stewie Correct. 2K just <laughs> on the ice skates over there around the corner. And that's going to be a trade coming in other side so it looks like Spice is still trying to make way onto the bomb site but they're being really shut down what is going on right now James everybody's dead everyone's dead Dan they all I don't know how JDM is ever reacting to someone coming around the corner that fast like obviously you know people the speed is all the same in the game but that is the fastest I feel like I've ever seen somebody <laughs> come around the corner and just shoot someone in the face epic stuff so CLG going to have off be off to a good start on the CT side, which I think is uh, quite important on this particular map because if you lose a pistol, often chances your CT side is going to suck. So Tarek straight on the M4, as is uh, CLG Peter. We've got the SMGs coming out for the remainder of the squad looking to get those $600 bonuses. Get that moving accuracy with scums such as the MP9 and the P90. I'm um. not even sure what the moving accuracy is like on the uh, UMP, but I'm, I'm sure it's not terrible. That's well, pretty, uh, you know, pretty average i guess I'm, I'm actually not sure if i'm you know confusing myself but did Peter actually have the the unsilenced cult on mirage i do not recall actually, I'm curious. in any Maybe case he's playing the pit position yeah so he's getting three frags there jdm and Tarek coming in for the last two so uh that's two almost perfect rounds for clg stewie 2k is the only man on the scoreboard so far for flight splice with one kill yeah, JDM was the, <laughs> the only guy with the death. So here we go, into the next round. And it's just pistols here for Splice. So they're going to look like, well, they're going to look very silly here, James. Very silly indeed. Although, that said, they are moving towards a position with only a single player. It is Cutler, but he spotted this, the forward position there. Now, how much damage can he get done with the UMP? It's going to be quite an interesting situation. It hates will come in by the middle area. So it looks like uh, Splice have been diverted through to new channels and really it's not, I mean, they're trying to find a way to get some damage in here, a way to just go forward through the choke points, but these SMGs are shutting it down very effectively with the combination of grenades as well. The recoil is so good on the UMP. It is. It should it be used more often. So uh, easy to control, isn't it? By you people out there, indeed. So Slemmy is uh, just standing in the corner, wondering what could have been. Ooh. Well, the P250 pays for itself at least. There were some nades which he will lose some money on. And Splice will move into the buy round with two frags. Yeah, the again, 100% increase. Not too shabby. And uh, JDM sitting with 100% of the deaths on CLG's end. <laughs> JDM actually, I often find, is uh, quite the carry for CLG on this map in particular. Over towards the B-bomb site. We'll see if he can do the same against a formidable opponent in Splice. Nah. Yeah, and they've already spent a lot of money here because they've opted to go for two ops immediately. That's a really big investment for CLG. 
and if, if to make it really worth it, they have to win the next couple rounds. So a lot of pressure's on in that sense for them. As Spice slowly but surely amble their way down B Plateau and also up towards the drop area to start applying some pressure. Pit is there, the only man here for CLG. He's got to be careful though. Going quite close to re-smoke it. Akis might go for the peak. He knows someone just threw the smoke and it's Pitter to defend. But this might force an action here out of Splice, who is slowly realizing that they need to get something done pretty quickly here. The benefit that Splice have right now is the fact that they do still have two people on that A bomb site for CLG. So the defense still not optimal. Well, the push is slowly coming in from Splice. Slowly but surely. They're all just lurking around, maybe waiting for the smoke to go. I mean, once it disappears, how many options will they have available to them? The counter flash is coming in from the CTs. And uh, still there's no push, but Ruru's taking down Peter. So, when is it all going to kick off here? The time is running out. They've only got 15 seconds. The bomb goes down, and I don't know what they were waiting for, but whatever it was hasn't arrived. The only thing that has arrived is a Skepta to take all off to take off all their necks. A, a what? A scepter. A scepter. A scepter. If we said scepter, then I was I like, did. well, surely, <laughs> not surely he could not have said that because that's not English. A scepter is what I meant. I was thinking of a the scythe, game maybe a scythe. A, a scythe, scythe would a make scythe more sense. Is exactly what I meant. Dan. Yeah, going for the I'm scythe. I'm back in the room. My God. <laughs> and in any case. Splice, they're back to an eco right now, and uh, they haven't really gotten anything done in the <laughs> first rounds. Sorry. Shut up. Skepta is amazing. Continue, please. <laughs> uh, Dan's lost it. <sighs> well, Splice are looking to uh, do the lemming drop into the drop zone, but how many will become lemmings? One makes it out, two make it out, all four make it out. And Peter is going to be the death bringer to two from the exit. So an M4 will be collected by Akis and soon dispatched of by Cutler. He will finish things off onto Slemmy, just about surviving with 11 HP. So this is looking like a route so far for CLG. Still, four round, four kills in five rounds for Splice. Absolutely. What's going on? What is going on, Halbo? What's going down in Chinatown? <laughs> well, right now, nothing is going on for, for Splice right now. It's like you mentioned, once they tried that B execute, it basically took about 30 minutes for them to get out from Plateau. And what are they waiting for? I don't understand. Yeah, and, uh, nobody really understood. They even managed to get the Molotov down towards chicken coop, so there was nothing really holding them back except themselves. Yeah, no stars on their uniforms so far. As we look to see a better result from them. And it's uh, CLG instead who seem to be doing quite well so far in Cobble. And the only uh, stars then are on the anonymous cemetery where they all died every round. You get the reference there. I do. Good stuff. <laughs> All right. And on that bombshell, James, it's time to observe Splice as they slowly make their effort towards the A bomb site. However, they've slowed things down quite significantly here, probably expecting uh, Rue to get something done from Drop Zone as well to just keep the presence of the CTs towards the B site. And they have to split up two to a site because they don't know where the Ts are going. And Rue's and Deacon to delay this rotation, delay this rotation with these nades. And the push now comes in from Splice onto A. And all of the players here from the Splice are going to start battering the, uh, the position of JDM. He surely is not long for this world. Well, he's got support in Cutler while he's missing the shots there. Finally taking down Peter, and he will get traded. Two versus three, but the GTs are on the site. Down goes the bomb. Tarek left versus two here. He's got all oh, trying to get the 1v1 engagement. Can't get it fast enough, and he will get taken down. Splice finally make their way onto the scoreboard. And again, though, Splice using quite a bit of time to actually make it onto the site. The only reason that round works out for them is because Stewie is able to, to get in behind both Cutler and eventually JDM, but they couldn't hit any of their shots initially when they made that push towards A, and if they don't do that every single round, they're not going to get many rounds. Well, but double ops coming out again for CLG. What's going to be interesting is to see what happens if CLG actually go bankrupt. If they can't get that double ops setup, or at least if they can't get an off on JDM, what their go-to setup is going to be. Maybe we shall find out if this is an expensive buy maybe there's something they're thinking of just just hoping never to find out maybe <laughs> we'll think about that later guys well we see a boost coming onto the plateau question is are they going to boost onto the plateau itself or just try and look over the smoke there 
indeed the boost will come in. So just going to be on the plateau now. Still no engagement, although information is being gathered by CLG here. And again, Splice are just moving very, very slowly in Ds. And uh, they've got 50 seconds on the clock to do something here. And right now, they're not doing much of anything. Yeah. Deja vu. But, but they're moving slowly towards that view bomb set, so we're probably going to see the execute. JDM is going to have to be the savior, really, for CLG here. He's going to need to find a couple of frags before Splice get all of their nades off. Here we go. They're going to be coming in, and the smoke dissipates. JDM has a brief moment of visibility. Clarity, perhaps. And there is the frag found with that clarity. As Tarek goes for the defense on the drop zone, not going quite so well. But eventually, JDM will fall by B Plateau, allowing Splice to make their way onto the bomb site for the plant. And there you go. The timer is a ticking on that C4 as the retake attempt comes in from CLG. And we've got a decent spread on the positioning for the T side. So it's going to be difficult to assault these positions. But there is a fast flick. Really nice reactions there from Hazed. Not messing around as they push forwards, but neither is Slemmy finding a quick headshot onto Hayes. But that incendiary is money. In he goes for the peak, and Cutler was ready for it. So he's going to get the defuse here and... Uh, as mentioned, JDM, I think, hitting that key kill. It was only one, but it, but that makes all the difference yeah. in that position. Peter doing a great job as well, picking up two frags and drop. He's actually, yeah, he's doing his uh, best to carry this game for double CLG. Is, we got a 007. Yes! Peter for <laughs> Splice is 007. James Bond achievement unlocks. 007, let's go. S sorry to interrupt you with no, that. No, no, but has yeah. that, has <laughs> that This is very important information, Halvor. <laughs> has that actually happened to Bondic? Special uh, Agent 007 Bondic? I'd, I'd be surprised. Bondic is solid as hell. Hadian, stop it. We've got to match the car. <laughs> We've got the T's pushing through towards the plateau now. Running oh out God. of people as they're getting cut down by JDM and Tarek. Three remain. Ruru's only got the uh, Tech 9. Tarek gets taken down in the ninja spot. Although there's still a significant advantage here for CLG. The CT's streaming into the site now. Slemmy and Ruru, can they get a bomb spot here? They've cut the numbers down to two for both sides. Ru left alone now, and the bomb's on the floor. He's got lots of time to play. He's picking up the AWP, getting a fast up onto Hayes. Not getting traded yet by the CT, who remains, who is the coach CLG Peter. We were going to reset the situation and move towards the drop back. Oh, well, look at this. He's actually he set up a trap. Peter does not know if he's gone through to the sight line. He's going to hold the angle. If, we're all in high, if we were all in high school, James, Ruru would be the captain of the Orp Club. Be the president of the Orp Club, James. That was a very nice clutch indeed by it Mr. Ruru, who uh, will double the score of Splice. Peter's even made it out of the uh, Special Agent Club. <laughs> Been indeed. demoted, no longer MI6. And uh, Hayes tries to <laughs> put on some aggression in the middle there, gets promptly shut down by two nades and a MAG-10 to the face. That is very good timing on those nades with the spray down. And uh, there we go. CLG not with much to offer at the moment. Three pistols and the AWP, but JDM is starting to get to work. He's given his team a man advantage now, but can they retrieve the guns? That's the next question. Yeah, Tarek in a good spot here. Just gonna pre-fire actually. That's quite intelligent there from Tarek, although a big risk. And JDM there, the uh, co-president of the AWP club. Looking for a shot, but it's not going to happen. He just gets smoked off. A very smart strategy there. Moving in with the nades, but now it's going to be time to move in as the CT side. Oh, the boost is good. Let's see if he's going to find something with this. Of course, it's not the perfect angle in the world, as Peter's not actually looking from that spot. So that's quite unfortunate. They're running out of time here. They've got to make a move. In they go now as the smoke goes away. Pitta with the first frag onto Root. Peter holding the angle though. By the B Plateau, nice shot onto Pitta. Two more players trying to get their way in, but nice tags coming in from Peter. The time is really ticking away at this point. They need to get the defuse in, and Peter's going to secure it with that frag. The round will be won by Splice, and they're back in this one. But for how long, I ask? But for how long? Got well, to give, give credit to Peter very quickly there too. He knew he was being baited, so he just moved in. The in plain sight to take out to take down the other player moving towards the bomb. Yeah, no, that was really well done by Peter, and uh, you were asking how long are Splice going to be back into this? Well, because they actually opted to to get an op on JDM and whatnot in that previous round, they're going to be more or less on a clean eco right now, except for the save coming in from Cutler. So Splice has a good opportunity here to actually get some control over CLG, and that's where we, we get to see probably the most exciting part about the game: how CLG are going to be able to play without an op on either Cutler or GDM. 
Well, there we go. The uh, MAC-10 is mightier than the Galil, it seems. At least in this round. Let's see if Hayes can retrieve the gun. Indeed, he can. Has uh, good armor penetration. Although, the AK shooting him in the face will put an end to any potential armor penetration. So, three CLG players remain, none of which have armor, one of which has uh, something other than a stock pistol. That CZ, which can do can be a nice one-tap from up close, but can they find the range? Ruse harassing in the drop zone while Stewie continues to clean things up here. We've got two frags of that MAC-10. Ruse does get taken down with a boost from Tarek, who's now collected an AK. Indeed, pretty rough spots for the CT side in this position. Uh, can we have a look at the economy, though? Let's have the uh, financial report with Mr. Havor. Gulistod. <laughs> well, it was close enough, close enough. I'll give you that. Nice. CLG all around 2K right now. Given that this is going to be the third round in a row that they are going to lose, they're going to be able to get a nice buy up on their end. Terry 2Ks on 3K. Yeah, and uh, with Tarek, if he's able to save this AK, he can potentially drop an op-off for JDM. If they want oh. armor on him, but that's not going to happen. In the worst quake, did I? So there we go. No op for, uh, I would assume no op for JDM. <coughs> because Tarek does want something in return. He wants head armor and all that good chest, or at least armor. So, two round lead now for CLG Splice. Getting a reasonable amount of rounds in so far. We'll see if they can continue these good ways. We've got a three-man push with a flash. Seems everyone's going to be flashed, but they've made it through the first choke point. CLG will smoke off the other entrance. Will we see the same flash again? Cutler expecting it. It's going to be looking at the wall. This time, both sides will get flashed. No push, just jet from the team. Going to be a bit slow blocking each other, and Hayes will get the frag onto Stewie and pick up the gun to boot. Uh, this is uh, actually going a little bit uh, too rough here for Splice. They're down to two players. They've made too many mistakes. And the disciplinary committee of CLG are out to punish that. And it's looking quite good so far. But still, Peter is in a nice position. He showed excellent play so far. Very fast with the AWP. And now two players left pushing forwards from CLG. Need to get past the APC. JDM looking for the first rack. He knows Slim he's there. Oh, critical damage done. Finished off by Hayes. But Peter still alive. Kicking. And he's got that P250 in hand. Hayes cannot overcome it. And it was 1 HP previously. This time it's 2 HP for Peter. This guy is really delivering for Splice in this series so far. Bit of a worrying thing is the fact that Splice aren't really able to build any sort of economy at this point. So they're still at the risk of actually having to... What Ooh, is that? That's NACS. Okay. So, so if he was with the, if he was with MI6, maybe he's actually with FS, the F FSB or something. <laughs> We've got an I infiltration here. Double agent, you're, you're Double suggesting. agent, indeed. Well, only time will tell if he will uh, double cross or whatever you call it. <laughs> I don't know. If you know, write your answers on the postcard, although I do not have a suggestion as to where to send your postcard. So, CLG just down to the pistols now, the Deagles, the CZs, the P250s again. Playing those close engagements, looking for the one taps. Tarek is admiring this wooden panel here. Presumably medium density fiberboard. One frag for both sides now as Akis tries to protect the gun and himself. Trying to move into a more passive position. Going to take down uh, CLG Peter, but Tarek's coming in. Can he kill him before the reload? No, shot in the face. Although two fast frags to CLG, what the hell's going on? Peter's left alone versus Hayes and Cutler. Yeah, he's been pretty decent before in these spots, though. And there's no Kevlar. Again, these guys are naked. Naked leaders. There you go. Peter will gun down one of them. Seems rather unfair, but... Say la vie. We have Hayes moving through. The smoke, he knows he's going to make the play. And Peter's just going to go all the way around. So I think this rotation might take too long of a time. I, I don't see any point for Hayes to actually run in towards apps to actually check if someone's there. But, oh, okay, he's really convinced that someone's going to come out of that those apps or something. Well, good luck. Yeah, no, this is going to be a really tough situation for Hayes because he's going to need to clear out so many angles while moving towards that bomb. Luckily for him, though, Peter has been tagged down pretty heavily, especially by his teammates. So I guess he would have liked to have those 35 extra HP about now. Oh, well, let's see. Look at Hayes POV and wow. see if Peter chose a good position. It doesn't seem Peter did choose a good position because he got shot straight in the face very quickly indeed. 
I think he probably could have chosen just about any other spot on that map and still been better off. Well, there we go. CLG will take the round regardless of the uh, positioning over towards the A site. So we have a bit of a replay coming in here. Peter getting up to some shenanigans. So CLG with a two round lead now and Splice will go have a buy three AKs and two pistols for them. Moving into this round. Yep, we have a lot of presence from Splice moving towards the A long area in which Cutler resides, his house. As it is also shared by JDM, as we can see. And Cutler's going to go close to the smoke. Oldest trick in the book, but it's good. Peter's going to go down. The challenge comes in from Slemmy, but he is already too critically wounded. And there are no medics on the field. Rue is the last man standing. Got the first kill there with the AK, but oh, the second one coming in as well. So perhaps he should also be the president of the AK-47 club as he does still have a lot of resistance to fight up, fight against. Can he make his little insurrection work? Looks like it won't happen. The dominant authority cannot be overthrown, James. CTs will win. You were getting quite political with this stand. I know. <laughs> I, I I'm apologize. Just waiting for the Girl Scouts, whatever they're called. The Girl Scouts? Girl, Boy Scouts, Girl... What do the girls do? What do you girls do, James? There's, there's an, some equivalent in London. I don't know what it's called. Girl, I don't know. Girl people. Spice girls? Girl, spice, <laughs> girls. spice girls. What would the spice girls do in this situation? <laughs> Brilliant. Brownies, that's the one. Thank Brilliant. you, producer. Oh, brownies, Reese. right, right. The brownies. No, I think we should stay with the spice girls. Yeah, before. I'd rather have spice girls. As you wish. Splash going to come through mid. Mm, pretty quick tempo here from Splice. Bit of change of pace. You can see the streaming onto the uh, A site, but they don't have much to offer in terms of weaponry. They'll get all of one fact so far. JDM hitting the spot there, taking down Rue on the balcony, and that's another fast round for CLG. What does CLG even stand for? Counter Logic Gaming, yeah. that's what it stands for. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> it is a good question, though, what, what the Spice Girls would do. In this situation. Get Mar marry a footballer or fade into obscurity? One, relative can only, obscurity? one can only imagine. Well, there's no football as I here. actually have a, I have a Jerry Yoga DVD. I wasn't paid to say Jerry that. Yoga DVD. I was not paid to say that. <laughs> so right, the last round of the first half here, CLG are four rounds ahead at the moment. They've got the AWP, Splice on the five AKs, and they have limited nades. Yeah, we, we have a push coming in indeed. And it's looking not all that scary just yet. We'll have to see whether or not Splice can get an opening. Interesting stuff, actually. The challenge here with the bomb also nearby Stewie is going to go the way of Cutler, so if they were hoping to provide that ex extra added pressure towards A, they have failed in that attempt, leaving Splice in an awkward position, and they look like they might be wanting to commit into a drop here, which would be very gambly, but they might just have to go for a gamble. <laughs> so Ak is just going to get the first frag for CLG in that round. Leveling the playing field, and they're actually going to get drop room control here, which could potentially be pretty big, as it looks like they're setting up for a bit of an A split here, but Cutler is pushing aggressively through A halls, and he might be able to catch people off guard. Yeah, he's coming in for the flank from the back, but his position actually has actually been stolen by the bomb, so this is a disaster. Peter's going backwards as well. What is this? It's not, fer it's not Ferris wheel, guys. Start moving towards the bomb site. I strongly suggest. Hayes trying to rotate, getting taken down. And that bomb might be a nasty surprise, and Cutler's going to be wondering what the hell is going on. JDM getting taken down by Root as well. So we have a three versus two. Bomb goes down, and CLG will know what bomb site it's from because of Tarek's rotation. But what can they do here? Cutler's been spotted, he's been tagged, he's been killed. Tarek taking down Root elsewhere. And the one versus two now, trying to move towards the site. There is a player on the site, and a player behind the wooden panels here. He needs to get himself a one versus one, but he's going to get himself a bullet to the face. Yeah. So, Splice uh, taking the sixth, sixth round. Yeah, I, I still think Splice can't really be happy about how that first half played out. They were in a situation where I think the score was five to no six to five in favor of CLG. Splice lost lost that eco round or anti eco round versus uh, versus CLG. I think it was might have been Cutler who had some heroics there. And uh, I mean, at that point, CLG would have been completely broken economically. Splice would have had the solid opportunity to make it seven to six, and all of a sudden you'd have a, you know, 
the p potentially really solid T half for them. So we can see the kills on the CLG side quite evenly spread out amongst the team. Actually, the same could be said for uh, the T's as well. So everyone seems to be pulling their weight for the time being. Although Slemmy and Akis don't have their MVP stops. So Splice moving into the second half with six rounds. Moving to the uh, CT side, which you may say might prove difficult, but it depends on how coordinated they are compared to CLG. We did a good job of nine rounds on their CT side, so we may have a three mapper unless CLG can break Splice repeatedly and ruin their buys, their economy. Yeah, and, uh, that's, that's really going to be the big thing. And if Splice can get off to a good start here, picking up the pistol, then that's going to do a lot for them getting into the CT side groove. Because you also need a lot of nades as well, so if you if you lose the pistol, you do a silly force buy or something like that, you get nothing out of it, you're going to be pretty hampered in the first buy around. I like how Tyke tries to throw the bomb to someone, they're like, nah, mate, you're carrying that. So he had to pick it back up again. Ruru's going to get the first frag onto Cutler, and uh, CLG a bit static at the moment. Just holding formation and trying to uh, emerge slowly. Hayes looking through mid with the rest of them coming up long. Yeah, it's going to be a nice uh, little crossfire, but... I mean, Akis is there to bait, of course, for Peter. He's got no HP as well, so with also the nerf on the pistols, you don't really like their chances here in this one, but hey, let's, uh, let's, let's go, let's see what happens. There's the first frag. So where is Peter? Looks like there's no follow-up, there's no trade coming in. It's looking a little bit awkward at this point. What on earth is going on? We do have a very nice uh, situation now for the CTs. That's developed. Akis will drop the bomber. And there you go, nice clean up in the end. Three players surviving, good little setup, good little uh, information play. Nice uh, tactical prowess coming in from the CT side of Splice, and they look well on their way back to uh, superiority in this one. Yeah, might be able to equalize it here as long as they play their anti equals properly. Uh, CLG, you know, we're talking about coordination at the halftime point. Didn't look like CLG were very coordinated right there because, as, as you said, Peter definitely should have been traded more or less instantly as soon as he picks up that first frag. And if that doesn't happen, him and Akis is somehow able to kind of swap places positions out there and pick up three frags in total so both ct sides win their respective pistols let's see if splice can hold they can weather the storm here of this uh for spice safe for jdm who is of course saving for the big green gun against clg moving towards long trying to uh take all those close quarters engagements and avoid the notorious spray down of the b push yeah, we go, here we go, we've got the push coming in. And there we go. Nice first e uh, kill there defensively from Slemmy. But lots of famous here, of course, on this uh, round from Splice. Of course, the, uh, the cheapest weapon for a good effect on long range. But it also kind of reminds me, actually, of my mum's sewing machine. What? That's the way, the way it sounds when it's, uh, when it's... Sounds like spraying it's, bullets uh, shooting. into... Into, into people? <laughs> Yeah. Don't you have, have you never Sounds like fi firing, tried a sewing machine? firing machine guns into the, the chests of terrorists on the hills of, uh, of Afghanistan? Is that what your sewing, sewing machine sounds like? Your mother's sewing machine? That's an accurate description. Well, okay then. CLG going to be down to the pistols for this one as they will be seeking the buy in the next round. We'll see if they can pick up a sewing machine or two. Splice is going to be looking to play the ranges, although Stu TK can be afforded the luxury of running around and just spraying his gun into people's faces. Although he's going to engage with a pistol for the time being, that will have maybe a better time of it than the MP9 would at that range. Right now, pretty heavy investment from Splice over towards that B bomb site without any real information as to what's going on. So. Luckily for them, they do rotate over with two people towards that bomb site, and they're going to find CLG slowly moving up towards mid. I don't think they spotted the bomb yet, but now they have. So this should prompt in a, a rotation from them. I really wish you could shoot those cannons. Oh, I really can. Where would you fire them? Can the birds? I, d I just need to fire them. You want to don't have it? to fire them anything. Can we get that in the game, Valve, please? <laughs> Priorities. I'll, s I'll settle for that. Do you don't have to change any of the the patches back or anything like that. I'll just settle for the cannons, man. I'm upset that, the they nerfed, that they nerfed the bells on an Inferno. That is yeah, a they little added bit the annoying, right? yeah. They nerfed the bells. People were trying to troll with those bells pretty hard though, but still. I think the implementation of them are still pretty trolly because it doesn't have a full scale. So you're missing one bell, which is pretty annoying. At That's least for me who played yeah. the piano. Yeah. Oh, 
JDM is going to try for some heroics. Actually going for kills instead of trying to get a bomb plant. Not that that would have been very likely to happen anyway. But there we go. Byron coming up from uh, CLG. Op on JDM. And uh, there we go. Here we were. And there they are. Exactly. So AWP comes out for JDM. He was saving for it. Put the money in the piggy bank. Smashed the bank. Bought the gun. See if he can get anything done for his team here. CLG having gone for the force buy, going to have uh, not the I most ideal set of nades possible. Had they gone for the save instead, we would have seen uh, a flourishing inventory, but now it's being taken. And we have uh, the push coming in so far from the... T well, not really much of a push coming in so far, but it should soon <coughs> be starting to make its way. It's actually not a push at all, because they're just the down still there. No, but it's, that's, that's my point. It should <laughs> soon be making its way, Jax. So if it's a push yeah. coming in, except it's not a push. Could definitely you? standing still. James, I, you could just go. Go, James. <laughs> I quit. I'm done. I'm gone. Well, the bomb See is, you later. The bomb is very slowly heading towards the B site. Very slowly indeed. I'm talking slower than a popemobile going through a large crowd of old people. How many skeptors, Japes? No, no skeptors, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe one. The old skeptor or two. Right, so it's going to be a contact play from Sylvie. No, they actually have a couple of nades that they're going to smoke off here with. Still, they need to be quick out onto the plateau and actually down on the side. Otherwise, they're going to get completely bogged down. So here we go. The pilgrimage is coming in, but will they be stopped by the room? He's getting the first frag onto P2. So the bomb gets taken down. The full rotation's already coming in. Stewie's still in the tree position. He's been hidden like Houdini behind the smoke, but it hasn't worked out for him. He's drowned in the cage, and it's Rue left on site. He's taken by surprise, and there's three seconds left. He doesn't even need to engage here. The round has been won with that one frag. Splice, victorious. Wow. How, <laughs> how are you feeling right now? Oh my god. Feels like I'm watching NACS. <laughs> that is cold. That, that's how I feel. I like it. Four nades for the splice team. Man, ad uh, round advantage now. No AWP for them. They're going to be content with their M4s. Although JDM actually did have the AWP, which was not lost in the previous round because he found himself alone in a cold world with no time to plant the bomb and had to scarper, as he would say in the UK. Otherwise, had to run away. Well, here we go. He's kind of just uh, sliding in through that. And immediately being eliminated, as is the rest of his team. This is looking rather grim. It really is, and now they have a lot of time to actually hunt down GDM, and they should. Oh, they don't even need to go hunting. GDM's going to come right to them. And right now, well, CLG, the... They're going to have money on some of their guys. I guess they can drop an op. Haste is going to do that. JDM's going to drop an... Uh, yeah, he's going to drop an AK back. So this this might still work out, actually, for them. They do, do get quite a few nades, but so far their executions haven't really been on par. So, I don't know. I don't see any reason for Splice to actually change up their setups so far on either of the sites because it's been working out pretty well, and CLG have yet to adapt in any sort of way that make Splice, uh, or put Splice in a really awkward position. What is the money looking like, very briefly, if we can see that? That would be... Not now, James. Oh, not now. Oh, Ruru's been pinned to the wall. That was almost painkiller style, Dan. Yeah. Oh, I missed that game. I do. Well, I Isn't guess we... Uh, blasphemy coming from a quick player? What? Well, it's a good game. It was a pretty fun game. Better than Quake? You don't even play Quake. I play Quake. We should one on one. Please, no. And settle this on the server. But it's time to uh, go back into this one. We have the push about to amount into a lot of contact, actually. They're trying to triple face. How are they not killing Peter already? Just stuck behind this box. How is that's, like, that's like the thinnest MDF I've ever seen. But still, it's uh, finally going to be the frag through the box on, from Tarek, and they can start to get the push going. But Splice have a lot of grenades left to actually slow this push down, which is really detrimental considering that CLG could be in a similar position as they were previously. In goes Stewie. This is still taking too long. They've got 20 seconds left to plant the bomb now. But there is one man. Slemmy, he's close. He's dangerous. And he's going to find only one more kill out of that one. But that, that could have been another situation where just playing it too slow could have cost them everything. Well, if Peter picks up one frag in that situation, that's going to delay things by at least five seconds more. 
because CLG are going to have to get rid of him with less manpower and less nades and all of that. But I'm just extremely surprised by the fact that Peter constantly face picked. Like, he re peaked so many times for just three people, including an off, just expecting a great, you know, positive outcome. I don't see how. I'm not sure if, if he even made it past the corner of the box once. I think he just shot the box yeah, he just about five times and didn't actually Crossing his fingers, yeah. hoping for a pre fire to go through somehow. Yeah, well. There we go. The buy will come out again for Splice. Again, they had some good success in the previous rounds, which will give them the economy to get a buy-in on this occasion, which means the AWP is coming out onto Peter rather than the M4. He's hiding in the hay like this is Assassin's Creed or something, and he's going to actually peek out and get spotted and eliminated. So CLG are changing the strategy there, actually applying the pressure towards A. It's working out much, much better for them, dismantling the setup. The bomb is now making its way across. Root is pretty much alone on the side. He's got no support, and he's not even going to get into position. Immediately taken down. So this is looking very awful for Splice right now. I mean, look how far away Peter is. This is, and he's got an AWP as well. Yeah, and how is the rotation still slow? I don't know. Look at what point. Why is he still walking in the halls at this point? I think actually that, with him being so far away, the best they can do is hope for his exit frags. I'm not really sure why Stewie is committing so heavily to this. Okay, well, I guess that's why. Whoa. That is pretty huge. And there is still actually time with the kit to defuse the bomb, but nice pop from Tarek there. Very fast. And Peter is going to find the frag, actually, but I don't know that there is time for this. In fact, I don't believe that there is. Very odd end of the round. Very odd indeed. Wow, he survived? What the hell? That I was not expecting. Eco bomb. When you said hiding in the hay, I thought you were going to say, like he's been with the farmer's daughter then. No, no. That would have been the money line. No. Stewie really making, or giving Splice an opportunity to get back into that round, because <laughs> the rotation from Peter was so damn slow. I mean, granted, you have five seconds more to actually work with, but... It doesn't really... Yeah. Well, Splice are going to be back on the buy once more. I think they are within the limits of their economy now. CLG looking to move quickly towards A with four players at the moment. Tarek running distraction. So many smokes over towards the B bomb site. He may entertain these two CTs for a while yet, but Splice may smell a rat as they do have three people over towards A again. That's a, a site where you commonly find one, maybe two people. But right now there are three. But it might be an opportunity for CLG to drop into drop zone with that one lurker. Well, that's exactly what he's doing from the looks of it. Yeah, down in drop room right now. Ruru has rotated around, though. Tarek in commando mode right now and behind enemy lines. Nice little pop flash over the top, but there's two players facing his angle, and he's going to get immediately shot down, shut down. But he did get a frag out of that situation, and his teammates can now push into the A site. But that's a nice kill. Scoot and shoot from Peter. A second one claimed as well. And that is going to be that. So... Easy shutdown there. I mean, the idea was nice, but the execution of it in the end didn't really pan out. Yeah, I think the shoulder peaking that Peter spotted there. Firstly, a good patient play to for him not to take the f initial shot, but maybe gave a clue as to what might have been going on there. Good hold by x well, It's going to be a solid buy, and CLG back to ecoing once again. So Splice are, are being able to actually control the economy of CLG for the better part of the second half. This is a horrible time for CLG just to uh, eco as well because Splice are so, well both teams are so close to uh, the end game and it would be Splice heading towards match points as well so CLG might be starting to get a little nervous. It's like uh, we'll see CLG starting to try and construct something here but Splice have started to take some, some liberties and do have the movement beginning to make its way towards A, but the ranges can be played effectively here for Splice. Now here it is, slowly looking to dismantle all these players and also to completely waste his incendiary. Giving them a fighting chance. That's what it is. Whenever I see a bunch of ecoing plays in the armor, all bunched together. I just want to see a HE fly in there, but Stewie, man of the HE, is on the other side, so we're not going to see that for any time soon. Slimmy Doe's going to come in and try and get some frags. He's going to go down. Rue's going to trade. Rue's going to be traded. Three, two, three now as the T's try to march, march to the side. The problem is they don't have any armor. Bombs on the floor now. Stewie 2 k coming in to do that. Spray down is going to finish off Harry. So the CTs will survive with three players. They don't really have a spectacular economy at the moment, so 
there are more players that survive the better, because you'll see that uh, Rui's not going to be left with much cash, neither is Slemmy, unless one of the surviving players drop for him. There is a Tamas still in play on Akis, and he will continue. So Slemmy's going to buy down as well. So again, the money, the uh, economy is still not great for Splice, but CLG on the double eco now, so this is a disaster for them. That's interesting. I would have expected a fourth play or something to that effect, but I guess they feel confident in their buy rounds. Or, or they feel that they just need ops up to be effective. Yeah, just seeing the, the crane at, at CT spawn there reminded me that like like Cobblestone, CLG's T side is still under construction. <laughs> Ooh, look at you. <laughs> Getting he's fancy. Yeah, he's developing. <laughs> <laughs> Might see some armpit I'm, I'm, I'm letting the darkness into my soul. Nice. Right, so CLG are a man down. And you do wonder if there is any... Again, you just do wonder wh how much research there is into these kind of situations. Okay, we have Peter 50s, maybe we'll make one flash. What are we going to do? Get sprayed down, it seems. Peter and Stewie coming in for, for some frags. Rue will contribute to the party as well. Tarek's going to be the last pinata taken down by Rue. And Splice move within two rounds of taking CLG down 2-0. CLG on double eco now coming in for their buy. Yeah, there's that up on JDM. And, uh, well, this is do or die. This is pretty much all they have there. Uh, they will get quite a few nades up and going, so they will have the opportunity to do solid execute towards probably the B bomb side, I think. Given that they have a lot of Molotovs, and hopefully they will have a Molotov for that tree position. Not necessarily because Splice have, have used it all that much, but they've used it twice, both times when CLG have gone towards that B bomb side, but. Peter, wow. so they can actually book out of no, a page out of the JDM book because we saw CLG that do uh, do that on their CT set as well. Yeah, Peter's really good at threading the needle with the AWP, hitting the finest of angles and shots. Now, as we will see, CLG feeling perhaps some pressure here to try to reopen things up, get a frag back in their way as they begin to amount to an assault. They want to storm the beach, James. Yeah, but if it's day of defeat, then they might be up against some machine guns. Might not be easy. There might be a lot of casualties here. We've got the mollies coming in for both teams now as this is the T's move onto the site. Jadim just holding an angle on the chicken coop, but Peter's holding an angle elsewhere. Stewie TK take down Cutler now. Will JDM hold the angle long enough in DT will? Peter goes down, and the other Peter goes down from Stewie 2K. So three versus two in favor of Splice with the bomb down to the Well, under a lot of pressure here though. JDM looking for the close shots, and he will get one, but it's Hayes now. He's got to get everything done here for CLG. Splice coming in with a kiss. He's on full HP. He's got the families. He's got flashes, a diffuse kit. Every chance in the world to close in. He will do just that. And it's going to be the round for Splice as they move to map points. Match points. Match points, well, sorry. Yeah. Match points indeed. He's got it all to play for. Indeed. It was such a fast first map that, though I forget, that we are even on the second, James. But that is where we are. That is where we... We find ourselves by for CLG at least. Yeah, they did get the bomb plant. That was a necessity. So they still get a couple of nades as well. We'll be able to set up with a with a pretty decent execute for speed. They're actually just gonna bomb rush it. You may see out yeah, it might be a fast place for them with the limited resources. Not going their way though. Stewie 2 k with a two man. Three players left, pieces on fire. CLG Peter. And PTR is still on the site waiting for more engagement. There is one. JDM going down, leaving Cutler alone. 16 to 11 will be the final score here. Splice taking it 2 0. Very solid performance by them. So I think there's going to be a lot of upset um, CLG fans out there. But again, Peter, their coach, but essentially a stand in um, for better or worse. And they go down 2 0. Again, single elimination. So they are out. They've been sent packing, they've been jettisoned into the sun. Yeah. So Yanko, hello. Hello, Dan. This is the, the part we enjoy, James. Yanko, how do you feel about the proceedings we just witnessed? I feel like I was on point. Well, firstly, we need a microphone. There oh, we go. Oh, again. Yeah. <laughs> well, it has to happen once for the EU games, once for the NA games. So yeah. now there we go. that's it for tonight. Yeah, I, I felt uh, it was, again, like pretty straightforward for, for Splice, even though in, in the first half they were down. In the beginning, uh, as you pointed out, they only had four frags in five rounds. So they were getting pretty crushed early, but they managed to adjust. Their, their players started to step up individually. We can see how CLG struggles, especially Pita. There was this one uh, one uh, round where uh, 
splice actually won a 2v4 and Pita was the only guy going through balcony, rotating through balcony and he didn't even think of shoulder picking the, the angle towards side which you know most of the players will do especially if you're aware of that there's an upper already inside so he just picked wide straight away PTR got that kill really pretty easily and then all of the r the rest of the CLG players all came from one direction so I in the end it was still a, a, a crazy round by, by Peter to win it with the P250 in the end but a really important one again as same as uh, on Mirage when they won that eco round this round as well gave them a lot of momentum they managed to get six rounds as, as T and they managed to win the, the game then on the city half how for final fours uh, but have you know sur positively surprised by Splice that they managed to take Kabul um, looking forward to see them in the future not really sure what to make of CLG I, I don't think I could come up with something positive at least I don't think they need anything positive right now I mean you know in a sense that Pete is just filling in for now they're trying to find a new player but ev even so I, I still think they have an issue with the fact that they can't play unless they have the money control it seems like obviously that could be a result of them playing with the stand-in right now but I still need you need to be effective in all aspects of the game and, and not just falter as soon as the other team gets uh, somewhat into it because that's what happened in both of these maps that they just fell apart so I, I would uh, place the question if you're looking at like uh, the uh, the top eight or the most con you know consistent trends you see in the European teams where would you place the the starkest difference or what would you say for these teams you know that they should look to improve upon that you know something that EU teams do all the time <laughs> everything every <laughs> <laughs> ask not the NA how the EU saws <laughs> I guess okay. there you go. I mean, it can be a, it is a couple of things. Not saying that uh, EU teams do everything perfectly or even most of the things perfectly, but if I had to point only one or th or two things, it would be how um, some individual decisions from the players that the players are not on the same page individually. In a sense that, you know, some players are more aggressive in a retake; they want to get there get in there quickly where other players are more passive they wait for all of their teammates to throw the flashes throw the nades and then go into a retake and the other thing is basically as a team you need to th their decision making as a team and their game plan coming into a, a half or a, or a map is not as uh, as clear cut as maybe for some of the EU teams which of course against tougher opposition it's it's a big problem in my opinion yeah you brought up Rue a few times actually yeah as Mr. Questionable yeah, no, uh, th I think that title can be given out to more players, <laughs> for <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, e EU players as well. Like, there's a lot of uh, questionable decisions, but obviously it's it's a split second decision that they have to make a lot of the time, and uh, sometimes it looks less excellent than others. And it's also always, I mean, 2020 hindsight when you oh yeah, watch absolutely. the games. Even if you can make some conclusions based on the movement of the players on the map, you still can't know for certain what the comms are. Maybe someone isn't calling, giving info, you know, like the on Mirage, the round where Ruru was watching Connector and JDM st still slip through and killed Peter. Who knows what happened there? Maybe yeah, he was I, I would have imagined that Ruru didn't want to give up his position gives the information to Akis. Akis does get the kill on JDM eventually, but that also takes away the focus they have on the A-bomb side, so CLD are able to take the A-bomb yeah. side. But and, uh, yeah, obviously that's uh, absolutely a factor. You never know if someone's just not giving information, if they're actively saying that, oh, I'm just gonna let this guy pass because there could be more. But you know, you, ha you kind of have to go by what you see, I guess. Well, our next match is going to be Cloud9 versus Enemy. That's going to be in just over an hour. So we'll be on a break. Until then, so we will see you for the next and final match of tonight. Uh, so, yeah, again, it's about an hour and 10 minutes. So we'll see you when it's ready to start.